Hello and welcome to Chindu.org. In this video tutorial, learn how to create your very first interactive dynamic chart in Excel. Interactive charts are pretty powerful and they can solve some of the problems that you face when you have lots of data but you must showcase everything in one visual. Let me give you an example of what an interactive chart is. This is the one that we are going to build today. Uh, let's say you are analyzing quantities sold for uh, some pro some products like it could be soaps and hand wash and shampoos and conditioners and whatnot and the data is available for previous 13 months so we have data from March 2017 up to March 2018 and uh, you just want to see all the data but if you put everything in one chart then it's going to be quite overwhelming and uh, whoever looks at it they will not be able to get the entire picture very well so this is what an interactive chart does it gives user a choice to pick one product at a time uh, to kind of see how it is doing so I'm looking at hand wash but I can switch to uh, shaving cream or uh, deodorant or or shampoo and I can see that not only the chart changes but there's a bit of uh, dynamic caption as well that tells me what is the quantity increase been in the last 18 uh, 13 months so from that month to that month the uh, shampoo sales went up by 108 percentage uh, whereas hand wash went up by 88 percentage so this is a very powerful way to uh, showcase the information and and make it available to your users while this is a very powerful technique it doesn't take a lot of time so we are going to see uh, how you can put together something like this in a very quick and easy fashion in less than five minutes uh, let me also showcase another interactive chart we are going to learn both of these today uh, uh, this one uses pivot tables and slicers so this is exactly same data but if it is in, in a different format you could use a slicer uh, to come up with an interactive chart and this one takes even less than five minutes so depending on what kind of data you have and how it is structured and what is the amount of effort you want to put in you could go with one of these two techniques these are my favorite techniques and uh, I'm happy to share them to you in this video so let's go into the very first one here we what we will do is we'll just copy this data set uh, into a blank worksheet and paste it so this is our product sales data um, for each month months in a row and products in a column uh, and if you have something like this let's just assume that the user has picked um, one of the products let's say they have picked shampoo okay so uh, that, that's the product they have picked so we will say pick a product here and uh, and this is in a table so whatever you add a column it will automatically extend the table formatting and everything and let's just assume the picket product is soap okay so all we have to do is we we will have to write a formula that gets me one of these six values uh, depending on what is written in that cell soap okay to keep this slightly simple if I know the number of the product rather than the name of the product so instead of calling it a soap hand wash shampoo if I know a uh, user has picked the first product second product third product then then we could use a simpler formula so let's instead of saying soap let's just say the number of the product which is one so we will use I'm going to just change the alignment of the cell here so you can read the formula better uh, and we will use index formula we will say index of those six products uh, give me the very first product whatever it is in that cell right so what index formula does is it takes a range of values and then it gives you one of the values the value that it will give you depends on that number so if you write one then it will give you the first value if you write seven then it will give you seventh value so when you press enter instantly all the values for soap will show up so this this column is a mirror of that column whatever is here comes there but if I change this to three then it's going to give me the values for shampoo right uh, so that's that's how this whole thing works right so now all we have to do is select the picked product column insert a, a column chart right so here is our picked product which which is giving me a column chart 
you can adjust the size and or no, all of that but that's that's that and and if I change this number the chart gets updated instantly so this is the basic framework of the dynamic chart you have a bunch of columns and you're picking one column at a time now how do I change the name there uh, well if you look at our original chart the name change name is not only showing up there but you can also select so we will go and implement that here uh, the first thing that we will do is we will select all the product names and we will give we will either memorize this range it is in C3 to H3 uh, but from practice I, su I suggest that you actually name this range okay so you select these cells go to your formula name box right next to the formula bar and then type a name I already have used up the name product so I'm going to go with the name uh, product dot names okay so when you type and press enter that name will stick sometimes it may not even show up but if you click on that little arrow you can see the name product names will highlight that range right so now what we will do is I'll delete this this thing altogether I'll just resize the chart uh, and then pick one of the cells above go to data data validation and then set up a list validation so what that means is in that cell whenever I click on that cell there will be an in cell drop down showing up with all the possible values that it can have the possible values that it can have are product names so we'll just type our name and click OK and I can see the names there right this is a smaller column so I'll just make this slightly wide nice and big like that uh, and if you feel the chart is lopsided you could just delete a couple of columns uh, uh, so that everything is nicely centered right that's our name selection thingy and uh, I'll to kind of demarcate that I'm going to fill up some color in there and uh, change the font color uh, make it bold so now if I pick something it sh shows up there you can also adjust your alignment and font sizes and whatnot so that is your shampoo selected now all we have to do is link this selection to that number because that number is what is being used in the formulas isn't it so all I'll do is where I say soap I'll say simply equal to shampoo so that 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 means whatever I pick here I get to see the name there now from that name we can derive what is the matching value what is the number of that product you don't need to actually link it here you can directly use the formula um, but uh, if you have chart in a separate page and data in another page having that kind of setup will help you understand everything better okay we are short on time so I'm going to shoot this uh, we will use match formula match formula match user selection in product names with an exact match zero that will give me the number six so that means deodorant is the sixth product if I change this to shampoo third product uh, so first product so this is the basic setup now how is it that here everything looks together well the, the trick is you select your chart you go to format and you remove the chart outline so there is no outline to the chart it just looks like a white box you turn off the grid lines so that there is a white canvas no grid lines nothing and then we insert a, a rounded rectangle shape uh, just around the chart make it somewhat rounded not all the way rounded and fill it up with no fill color no fill so there is your chart with with the title inside and because we have drawn a box outside it creates that kind of a container impression that everything is together all right so this is how that is done you can also calculate what is the percentage change from that point to that point uh, by just taking this value and that value and and calculating the percentage change and showing that as a as a another message there I've calculated it here so I'll leave that to you as a puzzle to think about but uh, if you have if you struggle then just go to chandu.org and download this file you can see the file URL in the description as well now let's go ahead and see how to make the second interactive chart this is even easier I mean the first one itself is really easy all you have to do is set up a column write index formula and match formula and bingo you're done but this one's got to be like the easiest ever let us say you have data in this format for this thing to work you need to have month product quantity in three columns not in 17 columns like the other structure so if you ha have 
data like this and you want to use this approach uh, figure out a way to get it into that shape okay you can either use power query to unpivot the data or if it is small data set manually rearrange or something like that so once you have data like that insert a pivot table from that data so select that data insert a pivot table I'm going to insert this into a blank worksheet so you can see everything here we will add month to the rows area and then quantity to the values area and I will add product as a slicer I'm using Excel 2016 which has built-in grouping functionality for date value so because it is uh, month is a date it automatically grouped by years and quarters and months we don't need to see the break up break up break down by quarterly level we just want to see it by year and month so I'll remove the quarter field and uh, I'll just expand these two years okay so this is how the data looks while the pivot table looks like this just go to analyze and insert a pivot chart of column chart okay so this is our pivot chart I'll move the slicer to the right side and uh, and it is showing me the quantity of the selected products so now if I pick soap I can see soap shampoo deodorant conditioner okay, so this is actually a pivot chart that's what you are seeing there now what we can also do is we can get rid of some of the things that that have that go with pivot tape pivot charts like these extra buttons and stuff like that just go to analyze tab and and get rid of field buttons uh, remove the the totals maybe I'll keep the total I'll remove this thing and replace the word total with uh, just double click and drive quantity in last 13 months or something like that all right so this is that and again we can use the same technique as before which is we turn off the grid lines remove the chart boundary go to format and get rid of outline and once that is done we will end up with something like this that that looks nice and tidy and and then just draw a a rounded rectangle around the whole thing okay and just maybe adjust this thing and bingo our interactive pivot chart that is connected to a slicer is ready okay you can also format the slicer if you don't like the bluish colors you can select the slicer and go to our slicer options and uh, use one of the built-in styles if you don't like the boundary around the slicer the border around it uh, you would need to duplicate the slicer style and modify that because you can't modify the existing ones uh, that's one of the limitations of the slicers but uh, this is this is equally powerful and uh, it is very very easy if you have the data just put it into a pivot uh, chart and uh, and add a slicer to it and when you talk to the slicer your chart gets updated immediately okay one of the key things to remember whenever you work with interactive charts like this is uh, we will go to our example here um, if you if you change the items then you you would notice that not only the columns are changing but also the axis would change for example deodorant goes from 0 to 2000 whereas if you go to soap it goes from 0 to 1000 so if I'm looking at this chart and I want to compare uh, for example the last column of soap and I get a picture that it's around that high and then go to deodorant it, it is lower than that height then I would get an impression that my sales or quantity sold for deodorant is actually less than the sale quantity sold for soap but the reality is because the axis got resized uh, we sold 1740 for deodorant compared to sales which is only 930 but the bar for 930 is higher than the bar for 17 whatever so this happens because every time you change the data Excel will go ahead and redraw this axis based on what values are fed to it to prevent that kind of a redrawing of an axis thing you can select the axis on your dynamic chart press control one this will let you format the axis go to the axis options and set the minimum to zero and maximum to a high value like 2000 that is the highest value that this axis can go up to and uh, adjust your major units to maybe 500 or whatever depending on your data this way 
uh, there won't be so much of bumpiness in your chart you will you will be able to compare uh, one value with another very well okay this may not be necessary for all the cases but in this case i find that having same access for all the items is is very vital so there you go i hope you enjoyed this technique of creating your very first interactive chart uh, this is a very very simple technique but uh, it it creates a lot of powerful elegant visualizations in your reports or dashboards or or charts so go ahead and try this and uh, tell me your feedback in the comment section okay and if you need any information about the workbook or any of the formulas used in this this particular technique check out the description visit chendu.org where you can learn more about this thank you so much for watching uh, if you like the video give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you again in the next one bye bye